All right, all right. So hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this edition of Wiki Education Speaker Series. My name is Brianda Felix. I am one of the Wiki experts with Wiki Education. And um, we, in the speaker series, we're gonna be hearing from our student editors that are here right now about their experience editing Wikipedia, all right? And so before I move on, um, I wanna give out a big thanks um, to our speakers who are here right now. Uh, you all are college students. Like I said before, you all have a million things to do. And so I'm very, we are very grateful that you chose to do this one thing for us. Um, and so thank you for being here. Um, all right, I'm gonna share my screen real quick. Um, just to sh share some links. So to give you all some context, for our audience members. Um, Wiki Education is a small nonprofit. We have a series of programs uh, that are meant to connect academia world with the Wikipedia world. And so these students participated in one of our programs, uh, which is our flagship program, the, the Wikipedia student program, where university students edit, right? Learn how to edit Wikipedia. Um, and so if you are interested in learning more about we, what we do or learning more about um, how to get involved in our different programs, please feel free to check the links that are online um, and yeah, and learn more. And if you're interested, reach out. All right, okay. So I'll stop share on that. Um, and so before I jump in, those people that are watching, right? Thanks to you all for, for zooming in. And I invite our audience members to engage with us, right? This is fun when we have people that are posting some uh, messages on the chat and uh, posting questions. So uh, please, please feel free uh, to engage with the chat. If you'd like, let us know where you're zooming in from. We'd love to know. Um, and yeah, there will be a QA and a at the end of this chat um, to, I mean, at the end of this discussion to answer any questions audience members may have, all right? So um, with that said, um, let us begin. So I'd like for us to go around and uh, maybe you all could say your name, what school you're from and uh, what was your initial reaction when you learned you were going to be editing Wikipedia as a school assignment? Yeah, how about, let's start with Erin. Heyo, I'm Erin. I'm currently with Utah State University and to put it simply, I was shocked, knew for sure I'd be out of my comfort zone and kind of thought about dropping the class, not gonna lie. <laughs> All right. Okay, cool. Thanks for sharing it. Eh? Um, one of the Emmas, or anybody want to step up? Emma, Emma Clayton, we'll go with you. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Emma. Um, when I completed my wiki project, I was in my community college at Lone Star, um, but I've since transferred. I'm now a student at the University of North Texas. Um, when I first heard about doing this project, our professor only gave us the option like, oh, do you wanna be setting up cameras outside in the blazing heat? Or do you wanna be writing an article about a scientist that hasn't really been you know, published before? And I was like, I'm gonna stay in the AC, of course. But then when I found out it was Wikipedia, I was like, oh my goodness. Like I never use Wikipedia because it, this website is confusing to me. So it seemed really, really daunting at first. But, you know, once I started, you know, keeping up with the assignments and going through the dashboard, I was like, I can totally do this. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Uh, anyone else want to step up? Go ahead. I can go next. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Emma Dunsmere. I'm at Simon Fraser University. So as you don't know, that's right over in Canada. Um, for me, my initial reaction was just, a lot of curiosity. I didn't really know what to expect or what it would look like. I haven't used Wikipedia a lot for research before this, so I just I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what the editing would be like, but I was excited for the opportunity and the new experience, and 
ended up being a really great one. Um, hello, I'm Tabea. Um, I'm a second year student at Concordia University. And overall, I was just like pretty interested and curious as well, because initially I thought that you needed like solid sort of credentials on a subject or like within Wikipedia itself. And that the process of like, actually crafting a page was like substantially long and couldn't be completed within a few weeks in a semester alongside having also other classes. So yeah, that's what I was like, my reaction. Oh, cool, thank you. So we have a lot of different reactions going on. Dropping the class, choosing AC, <laughs> thinking you need credentials to edit. So it's, it's, it's a little, thank you for sharing those responses. So actually, Tabea brought up, right? You're doing this Wikipedia project as you're also working on other things, right? So unlike your traditional writing assignments, right? This Wikipedia assignment is a public facing activity, right? Thousands of people around the world will read what you post to Wikipedia. So um, we'll start off, I have this question for Emma Dunsmere. Um, how, can you talk a little bit about how this impacted your experience as you took on the project? Like um, knowing that this was gonna be read by other people ex aside from your professor, you know, like was this any different from other research projects you've done in the past? Yeah, for sure. I think it definitely impacted my experience. Thousands of people around the world reading your contributions is quite good motivation to make sure you put your best work forward. Um, my group and I were definitely more thorough in our research, ensuring that everything we included in the article was well researched and from reliable sources. Um, I personally put more effort and more thought into my writing and the editing process, so I wanted to make sure that my writing was comprehensive and technical, but also written in terms that every reader would be able to understand. Um, so being able to link certain words to the other articles in Wikipedia really helped with that. It helped to define terms that we used. For mine, we were looking at a marine refuge, so we had to talk about some more specific technical things to do with the with the landscape there. So being able to link those words and those terms to other articles in Wikipedia was definitely beneficial. The, the process in general was, I found quite easy. Um, the Wikipedia education process definitely helped when it came to learning how to do citations, designing the article and adding small details that made a big difference visually. Um, the experience was definitely different from any other research project I've done in the past. It's so unique, you know, the research aspect is similar, but drafting um, your article in the sandbox, moving information over to the live article, adding pictures, citations, linking, all of that was a brand new experience and quite interesting to do in a group. So my assignment mm -hmm. was a group assignment, so I was working with three other people. So navigating that was um, quite an experience, a very unique one. Yeah. Uh, yeah, other than that, I, yeah, it was a great experience. How and also you had an interesting aside. I think you were the only one in this panel right now that worked in a group setting, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, but you also took a stub page, right? Yes. And turned it in and like really developed it. Um yes. so what like can you talk a little bit about, about that process? Because right, this was an article that already existed, so you had to go out there and see what kind of information you can add. What was, what was that like? Yeah, for sure. Um, there wasn't a lot when we started. The article was quite, it was quite minimal. It's a, the article that we edited was a, is about a, um, a marine refuge that was mainly led by indigenous communities. So there was, it's, it's a harder topic to research. You have to make sure that you're getting indigenous sources and that you're representing the information correctly and that you're interpreting it correctly and it's not not straightforward but we were lucky because there wasn't a lot to start with the article it really felt like we were creating a new article and we got to choose what direction we took it in mm -hmm. um the first thing we did was really just figure out well for our assignment we were given different important areas that you should cover it was for my ecology class so we had to each section had to relate back to ecology and somehow for our research 
And then we were given sort of a list of options to guide our research in what sections we should include in the article. So we just started by brainstorming all the important things that we thought needed to be in the article that weren't there and then dividing up that work. One important aspect that we made sure to cover was the indigenous perspective and the indigenous involvement. It's such a crucial part for this specific marine refuge. And I find indigenous perspectives are typically underrepresented in articles in, ed in public education. So we wanted to make sure that we, we did it justice and we represented that aspect well. Cool. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Uh, does anyone want to chime in on that question? Or no? No? Okay. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Emma. Um, so I can see Brian, uh, Instructor Shemeski, chiming in on the chat. How about let's hear a little bit from Emma Clayton. Um, so like I mentioned, right, Emma Dunsmuir took a step her and her group took a stub article and developed it, right? Um, Emma, you also did something in similar working with existing, or no, you you took, you created a brand new article, um, but you, you, you had a challenge navigating that because there wasn't really much out there, right? Uh, so can you speak to the process of learning like policies, learning guidelines, um, what was that like getting acclimated um, to, to just the world of Wikipedia and what you can do and can't do? So I definitely think that, you know, it's definitely a learning curve. Um, I had no prior knowledge of what it's like to write a Wikipedia article or what kind of rules that have already been set in place. Um, so I guess going through those first few videos and modules on the dashboard talking about this is how you'll properly cite a source this is how you you know will summarize the information but make sure you're not you know plagiarizing or you know using quotations that you shouldn't and acting like yeah. this is your work that's not the point of wikipedia this is supposed to be a summarization of all these sources about someone um and i guess that it was very scary at first because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to plagiarize something. I'm going to get in trouble somehow. Like Wikipedia people are going to come like knocking on my door. That is not the case whatsoever. Um, it's just about doing, finding all these sources and synthesizing this information in a way that makes sense and also shines light on researchers and scientists who haven't had that spotlight that they definitely should have just because of you know, the demographic that they are. Um, I think one of the hardest part is like kind of learning how to format things because Wikipedia is very specific on, okay, this is how you do citations. This is how you'll create an info box. This is where you have to get pictures from. And mm -hmm. so that can be a little bit stressful. You're like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like I'm brand new. I really, you know, these are baby steps, but I think one of the biggest things I just want to emphasize is that, you know, having a wiki lead like you was so, so instrumental in creating this article. And even though I only went to one of your office hours, just you always being available to answer questions, um, I definitely never felt like I was alone and that I would get stuck because you have so much support with the wiki education groups where you know, you've got people on your team and who want you to succeed. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm glad to hear that. That that is that's what we hope, right? That's what we hope by being uh by being here and helping you all with with this project. Um, so thank you for that. Um, actually, in, in a follow up question, because I know we were we had a back and forth. Um. Because you were like, oh, I think I found all the sources I can about. So Emma worked on creating the article for a biochemist that was a part of the Manhattan Project, African American biochemist, a woman in like the forties, you know. Um, and her name is Blanche J. Lawrence. And so, could you kind of talk about that challenge? Because you experienced a unique challenge where it's like, I want to add more, but I there isn't much to add like what do I do you know what was what was that like well that was one of the things that like was 
probably the most stressful in the very beginning. I was, you know, trying to Google who this person was and what they had done. And it was like, one article and then every other source I found about her was referencing that one article and it's like I don't have sources I don't know her date of birth I don't know her husband I don't know you know information about how she came to be a biochemist like it was very very stressful so I reached out to Brianda and I was like I think think I felt like I've got four, three or four sources. Can you please look out there since you've been a contributor to Wikipedia for so long? Please, please, please help me out and try to find some additional information because with my resources, I was struggling and Brianna was so helpful and was like, have you looked at this? You can use these resources. And that definitely helped me in writing more to my article because at that point, I think I only had a couple sentences. So it, it was definitely a struggle, but we made it through. Awesome. And Erin, Erin, I'm going to throw this over your way um, because you, so Tabea created a new article. Um, everyone uh, and Emma created a new article, but Erin and Emma were the ones that edited existing articles. Um, so, and you, Erin, you edited multiple ones. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, and also you were one, uh, one of the groups that that interacted with the community, actually. Mm -hmm. So, can you kind of talk about um, how 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 what was it like? Um, you know, the process of find of deciding, you know, looking for content gaps, finding out where you know to add your contribution, and, mm -hmm. and what was it like to engage with editors? Um, so my class was about history of sexuality, and we, like, I knew about this from the very, very beginning, which is why I was a bit hesitant on actually starting it, because I'm the type of person who doesn't, like, leaving a permanent mark, I guess you could say, on the internet. So that was one of the bigger reasons why I was thinking about dropping the class. And then once we got closer and closer to the deadline, it was, okay, we actually have to find content gaps amongst this entire class. And it was really interesting honestly because it was a hybrid of like there was a lot of information out there but there was also absolutely nothing out there but I didn't want to go out and try to create a new article not knowing I actually had enough to do that so most of my edits and contributions ended up being introducing more of the female perspective and what like the woman's life actually was because it was focused on like the guys and the doctors and all that kind of stuff and most of my interactions typically was, hey, I think I'm thinking about doing this. Just let me all know. Don't, don't wait. If you don't like it, I can always change it, whatever. And some of my interactions was honestly more so like making sure everything that I was typing down generally fit the, pa the page flow really, really well. But also like, hey, I noticed you did the citation in this one, one way. Maybe you can try and change it out to be this other way. And it was really really fun because at the start it was scary and then I did like three four rounds of editing trying to get it in rechanging it and whatever but it was really really fun honestly it seemed like an environment where I actually was able to touch a little bit that one not burn down Wikipedia or anything which was always a bright side yeah yeah it's uh, something I hear a lot, like, you know, hear a lot is you're probably not going to break Wikipedia, you know, <laughs> with your edit. They might get reverted, but that's probably the worst thing that can happen. Um, awesome. And then, um, so you mentioned the, the content gaps. And I think what you what you did was was really interesting. Um, can you speak a little bit more about the like the specific work that you did? Um yeah, I don't want to like explain for you, so just. Um, so I guess the biggest content gap that I found that was the most creative was after talking with my professor, I hopped onto like the official, what was it? I think it was World, no, the Great Depression over in the US. And I added in this entire little section about contraception and like birth control and everything like that, because it the article presently was very, very focused more so on the economics and not how an actual person's life was. So that was one of the little content gaps that I 
managed to rig myself in and felt more okay with it because there there was another section right above it talk about homelessness that kind of tied together. Um, another spot would be um, female hysteria. So back then, well, previously, it was very, very focused on like the male perspective, the doctors, the psychology, trying to like make psychology an actual legitimate scientific field. And there was very, very little, if anything, about the woman actually living this life, having been deemed hysteric and like what was the consequences of everything and how hard they actually, some tried to be deemed hysteric because of how life was then. Others had a really, really terrible life afterwards. And there was nothing talking about that. So that was another content gap that I had to like kind of pry myself into, open up, but it worked out in the end, so. <laughs> hmm. And then another major one is for both the lesbian general article and then also lesbian pulp. Um, there's two kinds, there was two kinds. There was one that was like pro-lesbian and it was very, very authentic to what the actual lesbian life authentic authentically was. And then there was the more viral, like, more focus on the sex side of things. And both of those articles either didn't mention either of them, and it was just like a little passing blurb, or they really, really focused on one. And I was like, well, this other side exists too, which is kind of important if you want to know generally the basis of everything that happened. So I think it was just trying to find the tiniest little gaps, hope no one else in my class took it, and then just adding more information about it to try and get a more comprehensive view on that field. <laughs> very cool thank you thank you for sharing that um uh let's see uh Tabea, how about we haven't heard from you yet um so you can chime in to any other questions i've asked so far or i guess what i'd like to know from you is what what's something that you found surprising or you didn't anticipate about wikipedia or editing with wikipedia yeah, um, honestly, a couple of things. I think first, like the overall concept of editing, like within the sandbox, um, like layout was actually more straightforward than I thought initially, even though like we had to describe like slightly each edit that we would do for it to sort of like validate correctly. Um, also like how quickly um, something could get tagged, whether it was like good or bad. Um, and then also especially how tricky like, it was to also navigate like Wikipedia's policy um, sounds like an advertisement like which happened to me because um, I didn't really expect my article to like be labeled or read as like a promotional uh, piece um, and then you know also navigating like how to uh, like having like neutral standpoint versus like understanding what wikipedia's like a uh, specific uh like idea of what a promotional page is yeah, yeah. Uh, that was pretty surprising and then also having like i said like back and forth like having like to for it to be put back into the sandbox and then back onto the main page and then like i um also paying like a user on the talk page um so yeah, just like overall, like having also now apparently having it like almost for deletion or something. So having to, you know, yeah, like navigate like those like further additional edits to have it be like considered notable uh, on the platform, yeah. I guess that's what I would think. Okay, so yeah. to give a little a little context, uh, to me, uh, experienced something very different from everyone else because <laughs> she created, she created her, um, her article and it was um, tags, right, as, as being promotional. Um, and um, it was sent back to draft space. So we, ha we had this back and forth, right? Learning about um, how to address, right? Those concerns, writing in a neutral language and kind of and engaging with the community to, to, um, to, to reach consensus, right? um so that was thank you thank you for bringing up the the neutral tone um and the encyclopedic writing because that is something that actually a lot of students feel or 
is a bit challenging for students, I'd say. Um, actually, if I could hear from Emma, Emma Densmere, because you were one of, out of all of us, you you wrote in a science uh, in a science related topic. So could you kind of speak to what it was like to write, um, you know, in a very fact based neutral tone? Like, did you experience any challenges with with writing? Um, yeah, for sure. I definitely did. Um, my focus in my group was on the Indigenous perspective, which I found quite difficult to write in that neutral tone, because um, all my sources for that section were Indigenous bands or Indigenous websites or Indigenous papers. So all of it inherently had a bit of a bias to it about the process or about the quality of the refuge or about what should happen in the future. And so I wanted to accurately represent the nations involved, but also have it come from a neutral perspective, which was a bit of a challenge for sure. Um, and then other aspects of our article, writing in that scientific tone in some areas was easy because it was just describing about, you know, what what animals are in the water, that what, what marine life lives off of the coast that needs to be protected, you know, what because there's such a unique ecosystem off the coast of BC where the mm -hmm. refuge is. So a lot of it wasn't too difficult because it was just more factual information about the topography of it or about um, which what marine life is endangered, why do they need to be protected? That stuff isn't, there's not really an inherent bias present in that, right? Um, so those parts, it wasn't too, too difficult. For that, it was just more finding information about it because there's not a lot of information out there about this specific area. Um, and that's partly because it is an Indigenous refuge. Um, and so with that, there's always, whenever there's Indigenous peoples involved, unfortunately, there's limited information compared to if it was, if it was won by our government, right? So that was, that was, there was a bit of a challenge with that. But um, overall, I actually would say it wasn't as difficult as I expected to write in a neutral tone because so much of it was scientific, factual information, just laying out the the base information so that people could understand the situation. Oh, oh all right. Thank you for thank you for sharing. Um, and kind of going along those this or the same thread, right? Um, and to bad if you can chime in because you experience these policies firsthand, right? So Wikipedia has you know groups of people that are essentially monitoring the work that goes on Wikipedia, right? Erin, you got a little taste of that too, right? Um, so oh, what, what, was, what was that like, I guess, encountering that where you're like, oh, this is actually like, there's people out there checking my work. You know, there's people out there making sure that, you know, work is adhering to the policies um, that Wikipedia has set up. Like, what, what was that? What was your reaction when you when you encountered that? Uh, Tabe, you, oh, yeah. you, you yep. sort of to um I mean, I like obviously I it's it's normal and it's like I understand how that could be something that needs to be changed. Like you can't really have like a page out there advertising something. Um and it, it it wasn't surprising, like it was surprising in the sense that I didn't expect my subject to be seen like that, but it is I was expecting like some sort of overall guidance and like support in terms of like confirming that everything, every article on Wikipedia is as neutral as it can be. Um, and you did also help me like overlooking my sources and like, you know, making sure that everything is like as concise as possible as well. And not like, you know, sometimes my sentences would like provide more information that would maybe be more of like a personal angle um, and like making it more simple and like straightforward that also helps making it more neutral. Um, so yeah, it was surprising in the sense of I didn't expect personally my subject to for it to be considered like that, but not for Wikipedia standards of like, you know, overlooking it. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Aaron, can you, can you kind of speak? Um... What, what was it like when that editor first reached out to you? Um, so yeah, the entire time I was working on Wikipedia, I was really, really scared because again, sexuality, very, very personal, a lot of opinions, don't want to touch on, step on anyone's toes. 
So when I got that little email that was like, hey, you kind of did the citation wrong. I was like, okay, got that, noted, thank you for changing it. And then from that point forward, I put in, like I was putting in a decent amount more effort than I thought I would be putting into it to make sure everything was right. And then I put in even more effort into making sure like all the citations and all the tiny, tiny little details would work out fine because in my eyes, that's kind of the best way to tell whether or not something's really, really well polished and like is ready to actually be out there is when all the tiny, minute details that most people would actually forget about or just kind of miss mm. has actually been focused on and worked on. So a little scary, took a couple steps back, freaked out, got back into it, <laughs> finished. Cool, cool. Um, so uh, after working through this project, um, are there, are, did you come away with any new perspectives about Wikipedia or any new skills that you can take you know, into your future studies or careers? Uh, Emma Clayton, we, we can I guess start with you if you're. So I think one of the biggest tools that, you know, being a contributor to Wikipedia kind of gives you is knowing how to, first of all, synthesize sources. Like you need to convey how all these sources talk with one another and get that point across in a way that makes sense to people who are reading an article. And you can absolutely apply that if you're writing a paper for a class or you're, you know, writing a research paper. That is really, really important. Um, but I think also knowing how to find quality sources, you know, kind of investigating websites as a whole, instead of just you know, finding something you're like, okay, this is great. You need to actually look at the website and say, okay, what kind of information are they publishing on a regular basis? Is it trustworthy? Are they biased? And so just being able to vet sources and say, okay, this is high quality. I can include it, it and I can trust this information is instrumental if you are trying to get far in your academic career, which we all are. So I think that's a really great skill that Wikipedia has given to us. Ooh, ooh. Um, other Emma, any new perspectives that you took away from this project or skills? My experience was very similar. Learning how to, especially for our scientific aspects of our article, learning how to present technical information and technical terms in a way that is accessible for all to read was definitely a challenge we came across because there's some terminology we had to use or some words we had to use that we didn't even know what they meant when we started and we had to figure out mm -hmm. okay, what is this actually saying what does this mean and then is there other words we can use or do we need to use this term and how do we make that user friendly for other people who are reading this and don't have the knowledge that we do um, so that's a skill that like Emma said, it's definitely one that I can use in the rest of my academic career, especially for me, I'm in a little bit more of a scientific field, I would say. So being able to learn that skill early on is is very helpful. Um, and then I think another thing, um, a citation, it really helped, you know, just it's different than the citation we do in papers, but learning how to be thorough and like Aaron was saying, paying attention to the small minute details of the citation to make sure it's done properly to make sure it looks professional, to make sure you're giving the proper credit is something that is easily transferred into the rest of my academic career. All right, all right, all right. Uh, Tabea, would you like to chime in on this? Yeah, of course. Um, I'd say the main one for me is like the practice of reviewing how concrete and like well supported uh, like resources for it to be like considerable in any like future project in school. Um, that's something yeah, overall that I think I'll think of more actively and to like select any uh, sources that are like well versed and like the most relevant possible to like enrich each side of the assignment in the future, I would say. Thank you. Oh, I actually I have a question, follow-up question for you. Um, in your perspective about Wikipedia, um, because 
did I guess did experiencing that kind of back and forth with your article getting you know moving into main space and then having mm -hmm. it get sent back to draft space did that affect your perspective at all about oh, about right. Wikipedia? Yeah. Um, no, not really. Like, like I understand why. Like, I'm not frustrated or, like, it's just, I don't know. I think I have more like digging, uh, to do to really like grasp like why. But I understand obviously. Um, it's like yeah, learning curve obviously. Yeah. But I, no, it did like fully influence my opinion negatively on wikipedia no. awesome okay all right erin um i think one of the biggest ones for me is wikipedia was something that has always kind of existed in my in, in the back of my mind that like i could go to for better information but about schooling, I was so used to being like told, don't use Wikipedia, don't use Wikipedia, don't use it, that mm -hmm. after actually throughout this process, I feel a lot more comfortable with it. And it might be my go-to for getting at least the base first shot of information that I need for anything coming forward. So I think that will probably be my biggest perspective change. Wow. I Thank you for bringing that up. Because um, that is, I feel like that is something that, um, comes up a lot right you go through school and people are like don't use wikipedia your your, your teachers right usually they're like don't use wikipedia you can't trust wikipedia um but you all participated in this knowledge creation process right uh, like you made information that is now up for thousands to read have you have you told anyone what you've done like have you shared this project with people at all and no we're saying some no's like okay if you did share this project, what what were others' reactions? Like, what, I don't know, how did you feel, I guess, after having completed this project? Like, did you tell people that you have edited Wikipedia? And what was that like? Anyone, if anyone wants to jump in. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so when the project first started, I was just telling my my mom, I was like, hey, I'm going to be a Wikipedia contributor. Like I'm, you know, creating an article for this biochemist. And my mom was like, first of all, what the heck? Kind of like you're writing a Wikipedia article for school. Um, and I think it's, she was kind of hesitant, like, you know, what's the point of doing this? But also I feel like my stance on Wikipedia definitely changed as I was, you know, going through the process because you know, a lot of times you'll hear like, oh, anyone can edit Wikipedia. That's why you can't trust it that, you know, they can just change anything. And it's like, mm -hmm. yes, but people can also always be changing things for the better. And so it's Wikipedia is like this big collaborative group project. And I think that's one of the things that makes it so special. You know, if you go on, I think your talk page, it will say, you know, your article has been reviewed. And it's like, you just always have other people interacting with your work, whether or not they're actually changing things like there's a sense of accountability in that sense. Um, so I think that, you know, my perspective shift and I was really proud of the work that I put into it and, to, you know, that I get to be here and talk about it because, you know, I want to change that perspective for other people. Awesome. Thanks for sharing. Anybody else? Did you did you tell people you, you did this project or that you were an editor? Anyone else share that? Or if you didn't, why didn't you? Or it just wasn't like something you were really thinking about. I don't know. Aaron, Emma, Emma, Aaron. But, uh, okay, Emma, go. All right, okay. Aaron, go. Yeah. So I kind of didn't tell people I was editing Wikipedia. They a lot of people knew that Wikipedia was gonna be a big part of my life for the next couple of weeks because I was so stressed out over it because it is a massive thing. But like now that a bit of time has passed, I definitely am a bit more willing to tell people that I have actually touched and done something with Wikipedia because it's very, very different from like getting information from a somewhat reputable source and then just like taking it as it is. And then going onto Wikipedia, knowing that there are thousands and thousands who have actually created it into what it is currently, 
and not really knowing what it is. So then I have some experience to be like, yeah, it is actually reputable. Just trust me. Just trust me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Emma, go ahead. So when I first told people, I, I think I was telling everyone, because I was like, guys, I'm, I'm editing Wikipedia. Like, have you done this before? Like, like I wasn't expecting this. And I'm like, what? Like, you're doing what? Like, that, like everyone was just really surprised and shocked and I think honestly found it kind of weird that I was editing a Wikipedia for school. They didn't understand the the purpose of it. They didn't know they didn't know how significant it was. And then mm -hmm. so through that process, I definitely at first I had the same reaction, like, we're doing what? Like we're editing Wikipedia article? Like we're not allowed to use that as a source. Why are we editing Wikipedia? Right. But then as I went through it, I learned so much about how important Wikipedia is and actually how reputable it is and how much effort and time and thought has to go into creating those articles and getting those articles published that I have a new appreciation for it. And I think that if people, if more people experienced it, they would too. And those reactions would definitely be different. Um, I did refrain from telling them the title of my article until I saw how it turned out. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, once, once it turned out really well, I was like, okay, I guess if you want to take a look, you can now. But at first it was just, Hey, I'm doing this. I don't really know what to expect, but yeah, I'm really grateful for the opportunity. I learned a lot and I have definitely a new appreciation for Wikipedia and for the effort that goes into that process. Awesome. That's funny. Yeah, wait, wait till it's published. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Tamara, do you, do you have anything to chime in about this? Have you shared with people um, that you've edited Wikipedia? Yeah, yeah, I remember mentioning it to a couple of friends. Uh, but I don't remember if I like had told the title yet also. I think just because it still wasn't fully official that it was up and running on their website yeah. until, you know, I knew that it was, like, officially on there. But, yeah, I definitely, like, wasn't hiding it or anything. <laughs> cool. Cool. All right. So at this time, um, speaking to the people that are Zooming in, our audience of this roundtable, if you have any questions for our speakers, please um, post them in the chat. and. Um, after my last question, we can we can answer those those questions you have, all right? Um, so please post it to the chat. We'll, we'll keep an eye on there. All right. So my last question kind of ties in with what we've been talking so far. My last question is, do any of you intend to keep editing Wikipedia? Why or why not? Whoever wants to take it first, just unmute and, and go ahead. Um, while I might not be actively seeking out articles to edit for Wikipedia, I am definitely a lot more willing to do so. It felt like something that was a bit taboo, I wasn't supposed to do, but now I've actually done it and done multiple articles, the world hasn't ended yet. So yeah, I'm definitely a lot more willing to do it, and it would be kind of fun in a way. I'm kind of excited. Awesome. Anyone else? Are you keep, do you keep, do you have, did you catch the Wikipedia bug or not yet? And that's okay if you did it, you know, just, it'd be interesting to hear why, why, why not? Or... I think that it's definitely something that I want to, you know, I guess keep as a skill and kind of, you know, do it occasionally so that I don't lose all this information that I have learned for this project. Mm -hmm. Um, especially as a tool to interact with other people who are making contributions um, because I don't think people understand how much collaboration goes on with Wikipedia. So just being able to go onto an article and, you know, maybe catch something and then go onto the talk page and be like, Hey, I noticed that this was out of place. Like I think that needs to be fixed or fixing it yourself. Um, just kind of keeps Wikipedia being the site that it is. Cool, cool. Um, I have experienced those moments where I'm reading an article and I'm like, oh, that's, I need to fix that real quick. Let me just jump in, you know. Um, other Emma, do you have anything to add about this? I think I definitely would like to continue editing in the future. I think it, it will be something difficult to do while I'm in school because I'm now aware of the time and the effort and, um, 
just to how how much thought goes into it and it's not mm-hmm. it's not an easy process it's not something I can quickly do in five minutes unless it's you know fixing a citation or fixing punctuation or something um but I have a new I have a new appreciation for the process and for those who do it and have spent all those hours doing it I would definitely like to continue contributing to the community and keeping those skills sharp and learning new things because you learn so many lessons editing Wikipedia articles and like we've talked about they're so transferable to other areas so I do hope to do it more in the future but it'll definitely have to be when I'm not in school full-time cool got it so may I, would you like to add anything uh yeah pretty much the same thing like trying to like keep my skills but also I don't see myself creating a new article until I have the time to perhaps bring back the one that was moved from the main page mm-hmm. uh, yeah that's what I would say all right okay awesome well let's let's see there's a couple questions in the chat right so I'm gonna read them read them out loud and anyone who wants to answer them can answer them all right um so let's see Debbie Curtis asks has anyone added this to their LinkedIn profile yet Seems like a really good activity to build a positive digital footprint. No, no. Has, have any of you ever like thought about doing that? Adding it to your LinkedIn? No? I have thought about adding it to like my CV. Um, I haven't thought about adding it to my LinkedIn, but you know, after participating in this panel, I think that it's definitely something that, you know, I think I'm proud for all of us. So I think that we should, you know, say hey we did this we did a good job and you know let other people know that it's worthwhile oh and no one else no one none none of the other speakers have uh added this even in your volunteer work all right that's so a lot of a lot of folks will ask us like oh like can we do we get a certificate like what what can we show for participating in this right and debbie brings up a good point that this could told you know editing wikipedia is volunteering right you volunteer to edit it's all on a volunteer basis so if you want to add that to your linkedin or your cv as volunteer experience that would be um that would be a good addition right and um kent green says uh to the presenters this presentation should go on your cv as an invited lecture slash presentation cool all right, take note, take note, y'all. Okay, uh, next question. Uh, Carol Henderson asks, I'm wondering how you perceived the balance between learning Wikipedia editing and doing the project while at the same time learning the course subject matter versus a course without the Wikipedia assignment. So how were, I guess, how were you able to like juggle this project, right? But at the same time learning what other things were going on um, in your class, you know? Does anyone um, For me, I think it went pretty like hand in hand in terms of like what my class's subject matter was and like um, incorporating like segments of reminders of like having to do some sort of um, like the, the chapters like in Wiki Edu, like the little homework that we had to do. I think he went pretty hand in hand. Like I didn't find much disparity between having to balance like learning the uh, general like course uh, lane and path in readings that we have to do and also like having that uh, alongside it. Um, yeah, the balance was pretty, pretty good. Oh. Anyone else? Um, for me, I was fortunate enough that my Wikipedia project was due basically at the end of the semester, so I had time to learn most of my course, course material, but the best thing about the Wikipedia project is I have a tendency to learn, like, the first chunk of my exam- my course and then kind of forget about it once the exam passes, so this has really made me have to go all the way back, review everything, and just invest myself a lot more into the course material and the lectures because I want to make sure there's good information that's being put out there. So it was fun. Interesting. Makes your review. Cool. Cool. Emma Dunsmere, do you have anything to add or 
you're you're good. Oh uh, yeah, I have a couple thoughts. Okay. Um, I don't think it added adds too much too much load to your course load. For us, there wasn't a lot of other assignments while we were working on this. So doing the different chapters and the wiki edu, all the different series in there wasn't too difficult. There was a lot of research for mine because we weren't learning about it in class, what we were writing about. So all of the research, all the effort, it wasn't, it was connected to our class as in we were talking about ecology and I was researching ecology, but it wasn't directly related. So it didn't, it didn't totally connect to the class content in some ways. But I don't think the the learning, how, how do you put Wikipedia took up that much time for me, for my group, what took up most of the time was the group portion of it, like working on it as a group. There was some, there's some interesting hurdles we had to overcome, editing the sandbox at the same time from multiple different mm. devices and mm. doing research and that sort of stuff that would have taken more of our time than just simply going through the learning process. All right. That's it. Interesting perspective. Thank you for sharing that. All right, let's see. Uh, next question. Uh, so, typical, so it says, smooch writing in instruction is about a thesis or argumentative driven document, right? How did you make the transition to Wikipedia's different demands where original work is a form of criticism? Um, so I guess it's kind of um, this question is kind of about right you 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 all are typically um, asked to write right argumentative um, pieces of work right how how was that learning how to write in the more like uh, fact based uh, style or way right away from the persuasive writing, away from making an argument. What was what was that experience like? Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I definitely think it was, you know, a shift because, you know, I was part of my honors college. So we would do research papers for my honors courses. And um, even though that does give you experience in like your methodology, you're supposed to talk about how all these and all these sources work together um for this I feel like because we're covering you know scientists and researchers who have done incredible work but haven't had the spotlight it's I'd say more challenging to write in a neutral tone because for me like reading about Blanche even though there was so little information I'm like this is an African-American female scientist who's working on the Manhattan Project. Like that is huge, especially in like the 1940s. That is amazing. And yet there's so little information. So I guess you have to kind of separate your passion and your frustration and your, you know, desire for that person to be highlighted and say, okay, well, this is what has been put out about her. And I just have to, you know, synthesize that for people to read. So you definitely have to separate your opinions and, you know, your, your passion for presenting this information and doing it according to Wikipedia's guidelines. Hmm. Anyone else? No? Okay, cool. Um, so there's an interesting question um, about AI. So I, I think it would be interesting to get your experience, the student ex uh, perspective on this. The question is, how is how is AI going to affect the pro the whole process of working on Wikipedia in whatever capacity? And I mean, I could answer that from the Wikipedia expert, but uh, expert perspective. But I think actually, I'm curious to hear what you all have to say, considering this came out not too long ago. You've gone through the process of of editing for Wikipedia, what what are your thoughts on AI and its um, and its impact on on Wikipedia? I don't know. If you feel comfortable at answering that, like, feel free, no pressure. <laughs> An interesting wild card answer. I mean, question. Yeah. yeah. Well, um. 
I will say we actually had a speaker series about um about AI. So um if you go to or about AI and its impact on Wikipedia, we had a whole bunch of panelists. So um for Martha Leah, if you want to check that out, go to our Wiki Education uh, page, type in speaker series, uh huh, and you can access the recording of that of that talk. And um there was some pretty good uh, discussions that were had. So I totally recommend you check that out. All right. So we've kind of, we've reached, uh, I don't see any more questions in the chat or in the Q&A. So um, if there are any last, last minute comments that you all would like to make, anybody, you feel free um, to unmute and make them if you'd like to at this time. Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. All right. We feel good. Okay. Well, in that case, I'll wrap up this uh this panel. Thank you so much, Erin, Emma Clayton, Emma Dunsmuir, Tabea. Thank you so much for for joining us and for sharing your experience um with with me, with the audience. You all did a great job, and I really appreciate you you all making time for this. And to anyone, everyone that joined, that joined in to listen, thank you as well for making time to, uh, to to hear about the student perspective. Um, this is this is something we don't usually get to do. We don't usually get to hear from students themselves, you know. And so I think this is a very special moment um, for for us all, especially those that are involved in the project and for instructors that are hosting it. Right? It's always good to get to get the student perspective. So. Thank you all so much for coming through. And uh, till next time. Ah, if you want to, before I leave, um, let me share again the links that I shared in the beginning. Right, if you are interested about learning more about Wiki Education or any of the programs that we run, um, please, please visit these links. Um, if you're interested in teaching, right, and to have your students be a part of this, kind of how these students participate in the project, please visit teach.wikiedu.org, and that will give you more information. All right. Um, we're excited to continue these projects and to continue working with students. And uh, yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. I'll stop. Yeah. 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 Goodbye. Bye. Thanks for coming, everyone. Thanks so much. I will stop recording.